Hey, Teen Creeps listeners, as you all know, we here at Teen Creeps love the movies. We love movies, and you know we love movie podcasts. And now one of the greatest movie podcasts of all time, that's no joke, that's the honest to God's truth, is available right here on the Forever Dog Podcast Network. It's called Black Men Can't Jump in Hollywood. This beloved podcast reviews films with leading actors of color and analyzes them in the context of race and Hollywood's diversity issues. And also, it's funny as shit and a pleasure to listen to. Jump in to Black Men Can't Jump today. Jira, James, and John have an incredible back catalog of over 150 movies that you can check out right now. And brand new episodes every Monday featuring discussions about brand new movies like Night School, Black Klansmen, Crazy Rich Asians, Black Panther, whatever the big movie out that weekend is, the guys are on it and you want to be in on the conversations. So movie lovers, culture lovers, politics lovers, comedy lovers, this is your new favorite show. Subscribe to Black Men Can't Jump in Hollywood on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts today. And now, on to the show. Forever. Dog. It began as a prank and ended in murder. This week on the podcast, R.L. Stein's The Wrong Number. Welcome to Teen Creeps, the podcast that discusses why pulp fiction. I'm one of your hosts, Lindsay Katai. I'm another one of your hosts, Kelly Nugent. And today we are joined by a very special guest. Uh, he is a podcast producer and podcaster. You may know him as a producer from My Favorite Murder, from the Purrcast, from C Jurassic, right? It is Stephen Ray Morris. <laughs> Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> you did your own, own crowd yeah. work. I just needed it tonight. I just needed a little pep. Yeah, a little yeah. Extra pep. pep. And I like how Kelly and I did a single cheer each, but you did your own crowd work. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. it was the whole it was stadium. A, a roaring crowd. Yeah. I was thinking of, there's like an Angry Beavers episode where he does his, what the the dorkier younger one does his own like, <sighs> yeah. and it's like, I feel like <laughs> the I got. The crowd goes wild. Yeah. <sighs> And I just feel like that's been stuck with me ever since. Mm-hmm. So, well, we all remember the moment that we were all changed by an Angry Beavers episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Blob one that was kind of creepy. Blob one. I don't think was, I remember that one. Or no, it was like um, like it was like a thumb like on a blob, and it just was like dragging itself across the floor. Ooh, that's like creepy. A, yeah, it was a cool like spooky episode. I remember the cool. show, but I don't. I didn't watch the show. I, th- I watched it intermittently. Well, I feel like it's if it's not on Netflix now, I feel like we don't remember the shows that um, like it's shows get revivals now when they come back on Netflix or Hulu. Yeah. And it's like if the, if the show doesn't isn't allowed to come back on streaming it's now, like, it's like, did it ever happen? Yeah. 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 It didn't. We're not allowed to relive those memories. No. If a tree falls in the forest and it doesn't get put on Hulu, <laughs> did it ever really happen? No, I don't no. think so. If it's only on Crackle. <laughs> yeah. With like the worst timed commercials. <laughs> I once I want uh, two years ago, I watched The Craft on crackle and it was like literally like mid sentence from the characters it would cut to a commercial break oh no that they just do it on so many cable channels uh streaming services so it's like it's your show guys yeah find the spot where the ad should come in they're just but no lazy, it'll dude. be like something will be like <gasps> and then it'll cut back in and it'll be like <gasps> <sighs> Yeah, and I, it was like mid cliffhanger, and then we get a little more of the cliffhanger, and then we cut to the next scene. And I'm like, what? What are you doing? The show, yes, on Lifetime, <laughs> <laughs> very specific. But yeah. like, it uh, was like liter. It wouldn't even make sense. Like for Crackle, it was like they'd be like, "All right, let's go to," and then it would just go to commercial, and well, then it would come back and be like school. <laughs> you're like oh i just that definitely feels like laziness because totally. as somebody who's like helped digitize at least back paddle back back pack logs back catalogs for podcasts mm-hmm. it's like you have to go find those insertion points yeah and it's like, i can see somebody being like wow t- i don't know how many seasons of full house there were 10 seasons of full house gotta find all the commercial br- oh, i mean nightmare i mean it'd probably be easier for older shows like that because it was like they really Formulaic. did have those. Yeah, commercial like breaks. The, yeah, yeah, those commercial breaks were baked in where they'd almost like reshow some of the action yeah. again. Yeah. Um, but I feel like yeah, now it's almost because there's one podcast platform where it just analyzes silence, 
And sometimes I'm lazy and I'm just like, yeah, that's the longest silence. <laughs> but, but that doesn't mean it's actually it's going to fall in the middle of right, something right. dramatic. It could just be or, someone like trying to think of a word. They're like, oh, you know what? It reminds me of. Um, Hi, we're going to take movie. a quick break from the show and talk to you about <laughs> one of our sponsors. <laughs> yeah, it's. Yeah, I just I just had a panic attack thinking of like somebody having to go through like 10 epi- 10 uh, seasons of like yeah. X-Files and having God. Their, their, the first nine seasons mm-hmm. or whatever, but it doesn't make for good viewing. No, no nightmare. Yeah. nightmare. I just realized that show is called You Not Yes. Oh, so we'll um, go back and we'll have uh, yeah, I Alec apologize, fix that. Greg Berlanti and whoever else <laughs> created that show. <laughs> um. So this week we read... The Wrong Number. This is a very popular book. Um, I would say best cover. Best so cover out good. of all of the first. Yeah, co- it's like, a this really is good one. A beautiful cover. Um, I, I can't put it at best because my heart still belongs to Cheerleaders, Second Evil. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Sleepwalker is very, very good. Sleepwalker is really good. Um, it feels those it- are the three I think I can think of off the top of my head. Oh, Silent Night's pretty good. Silent Night is a really good one, too. It feels, and maybe, like, again, maybe I'm, it feels accurate to the story. Because I always feel like I've noticed yeah, in, in, did, in listening sure. to like in just since I've been on before, it's it's almost like a it almost seems like every time you guys like bet how accurate the cover and the back description are. And sometimes yeah. it almost has nothing to do yeah. with what's actually in the book. And this feels like accurate. Yeah. to the book itself. Can I see yours? Yeah, so, yeah. Because so, I had to get it on stupid Kindle. Oh. It, your book is like brand Pristine. spanking new. I'm so sorry. I just spilled something All my bills it. just fall you, out you of the You spilled a paper. <laughs> I spilled paper. Um, the the cover is really good. It is a very it, good um, It's these two girls. Uh, I The long-haired girl is Jade. The short-haired girl is Dina. Um, they're like wearing kind of like teen nighties and they're sitting on a bed um and one is very leggy and they're both on a phone like scared and then the light inside is very like pink and warm and then Mm -hmm. outside it's like very blue and cold looking and then there's like what looks like a mausoleum but i think it's a house (laughs) i mean on fear street well they're not on fear street they don't live on fear street but it does seem very fear street wait but oh yeah 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 wasn't her phone blue in the moon I also, think so, yeah. Jade has uh, red hair. Yeah, yeah Jade has red big... hair, and um, so, what's her name's hair is more blonde. Is yeah. More blonde. So these yeah. two girls don't exist, but yeah. it was they like stri- accurately represent the feel. <laughs> Those two girls are like just um, a coincidentally like two other girls that live in Shady Side that also do prank calls, but they just never got involved in a murder. Oh. Or we walked in and we went, ah, wrong number, and they went, what? That's not us. And then we're like, oh, I'm so oh, sorry. I'm so, I'm so sorry. sorry. I'm so sorry. They're like, we're on a different book. We're in prank call. <laughs> like, oh my god. We thought you were Jade and what's her face? No, my name's Sarah and this is Man here. Oh, man yeah. Man here. <laughs> man here. <laughs> man here's <Those> classic like, <laughs> teens. Man here's like, Sarah's like so much prettier and like so much more of a normal name. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, sorry. <laughs> we didn't write you. Um, oh. Do you want me to read the back of the book? Yes, please. Welcome to Fear Street. Oh, this top part is just like, like about Fear Street. I'm pretty sure there's more. <laughs> Don't listen to the stories they tell you about Fear Street. Wouldn't you rather explore it yourself and see if its dark terror and unexplained mysteries are true? You're not afraid, are you? Yes. Please come quickly. You're my only hope. It begins as an innocent prank when Dina Martinson and her best friend Jade Smith. Wow, we get last names on here. Nice. D make- Martin. <laughs> D Martin. I was thinking that. Make sexy phone calls to the boys from school. But Dina's half-brother Chuck catches them in the act and threatens to tell their parents, unless the girls let him in on the fun. Chuck begins making random calls, threatening anyone who answers. It's dangerous alive. and exciting. <laughs> yeah, they're not really that random. And he's not threatening everyone. And it was like two. <laughs> yeah. It was like- <laughs> this was his third call. <laughs> <laughs> they're even enjoying the publicity. No, they aren't. And the uproar they've caused. Jade is. A Jade is. Dina's not. Until Chuck calls a number on Fear Street. To his horror, Chuck horror. realizes he has called the wrong number. No, he didn't. Caps. He was calling a number. I know. He's calling. He, he called the number he meant to call. <laughs> yeah. He, ca- he was like, I'll call this number. And then he called that number. And it was that number. <laughs> the jokes are no over. Yeah. Oh, the jokes are over, guys. When oh, murder's on the line. That's funny. The murderer knows who they are and where they live, and they have nowhere to call for help. It 
no one to call for help. It's true, though. That's I mean, badly phrased. Wait, so like nowhere to call for help. Like, do they just mean like they can't find a phone? Yeah, they're like, where's <laughs> Omaha? <laughs> I have to call Omaha for help. It's nowhere. Yeah. It's nowhere. Well, I was going to say, because at least that, that's accurate, because at the end of the book, spoilers, that the phone lines are all down at the end or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess that's kind of accurate. But ish. Yeah, yeah. Ish. I yeah. guess. Yeah. On a technicality, uh, because Stephen is generous of heart. You can have that one. Heart. <laughs> I'm waiting to be. You have such a big heart. I'm waiting to be broken down again. Already, this is much. This is like a Lord of the Rings compared to the Goosebumps book I read the first <laughs> time. Like, I mean, again, this book was still really easy to get through, but like. Compared to Goosebumps, like this is almost Shakespeare. Yeah, true. yeah. Like, also, <laughs> true. I will say, yeah, this is like it, it. Like the the leap between Goosebumps and this is the same as the leap between this and a Stephen King book. Yeah, yeah, I would say that. This, I would also say, it's one of the median to better Fear Street books we've read. I thought it was pretty good. It, yeah, the thing that like it was actually exciting. The plot moved along. It wasn't repetitive. Yeah, and it was like kind of scary. Like, yeah, I the, the didn't guy know what was, was going to happen. Um, I was a little bit like, I di- I wasn't super thrilled with the end because I was like, really, you guys just like hid in a tree and then the yeah. cops came and then Chuck was like, I'm out of jail and they're like, how? And he's like, it's a long story. I was like, you can tell us, and, and they <laughs> don't. And then he does sort of. Well, he's like, and it's it's like such a like lie but not lie <laughs> it's not an rl stein lie it's yeah. just it's just a bit of a fudging um because like uh dina goes to visit chuck in jail and chuck's flipping out rightfully so he's been jailed yes he's, um, he's been unrightly he is an jailed. innocent man in jail and and he's like i gotta get out of here i gotta get out of here and she's like don't worry we're gonna go to the house we're gonna look for something to clear your name and being a good, a genuinely good person, he's like, don't go back there. Do he, he not literally go back is there. like, no, no, no. And he's being like dragged away by the guards practically. He's like, don't you go back there. Well, I like her reaction. She's like, I can't look anymore. And she like walks away and he's like. <laughs> yeah, he's like <laughs> literally like screaming. And she's Dana, like, I can't, she's like, I can't look, look. I can't look. I can't no. look. I can't look. I can't I look. Like me, not I can't you. Look, I can't look. I can't look. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye. I'm going to do it. Bye. Um, no, he's, he's like <laughs> losing his goddamn mind because they are going to go back to the house of a murderer, which also like, here's, I guess it does turn out that like the cops are keeping an eye on this guy. Yeah. Cause my thought was, I accepted that. Well, my thought, cause I didn't know that. Yeah. So before when they're like, we're going to go to the house, I was like, the cops are going to like, know you guys went back to the house cause they're probably watching the house and then they get there and the cops aren't there. And I was like what <laughs> really they're not like keeping an eye on a murder scene at all but also, then they why are. Is, he's not allowed to like go back and live there i know and they're like surprised he's not they're like oh good he's not home i was like yeah he wouldn't be because it's a murder scene um i also wanted to okay um so the two girls um dina and jade they just like they want to like spy on the guy they think is the murderer because basically what happens is <laughs> okay so you said that they just want to like Bye. <laughs> they do well, like okay, Scooby Doo, Nancy Drew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but, very but, with, but complete naivete. Everyone's like really naive for a little bit because it's it's like oh you know it's the husband always does it. Yeah, but then it's also that mix of like the classic kid of like we don't believe the kids, so they have to yeah. take matters in their own hands. Yeah. yeah, but it's like these cops are like it's like both options, and they I don't know. It's very strange of like yeah, which he, way they were gonna go. Of yeah. Like, well, yeah, they're just doing their job, but then they're also they're also being really naive as well. Like, of yeah. course, it's, I mean, it's, yeah, it's always the husband. Yeah. Yeah. It's always the husband. Yeah. yeah. And especially, and that like, glibly, like, well, I mean, then, dismissive. Yeah. Then it made me just think, were they just doing that to make sure that they, that Dina and Jade weren't worried or something? Because they were like, oh, yeah, like, we were looking at them the whole time. And then Dina's like, what? I know. I know. And then Chuck's like, yeah, I was in on it too. And that's, she's like, what the fuck is this? That's, that's the moment where I'm like, this is, you're kind of like, this is a bit of a fudge because when last we saw Chuck, he was flipping out at the very idea of you going there. And all of a sudden he was like, I'm helping. I was like, in a day you were helping. So He's here's like, what I think. I went and I told them and I was like, but this was like after a week of them not believing any fucking thing any of the three of you said. Well, then he's like, um, 
Well, I called them and said I had something to confess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, all right. Well, it's yeah. like, it feel, you feel bad for, for Dina and Jade because it feels like everyone knew what was going yep. on except for them. Yeah. yeah. And then it seems it's like... And it, then they're in danger. They were the ones, yeah. exactly. They, they were, were the ones, ones that, in the most danger. Like, it was literally like they led them into a trap when we're yeah. like... like I would almost believe it more if they were like, huh, we actually knew you were going to go there. We just wanted to bait him out a little bit. Yeah, I thought that I was going to be gonna it. say that. Yeah, it, it's more like instead of like letting them go and take and like be the bait, it was as if they took, they opened like a bear trap and they were like, okay, we'll just come back to this later. Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't like they were trying, they weren't like placing them as the bait on the bear trap and they they were like, um, don't go near that area, and but not mentioning that there was a bear trap there. Yeah, yeah. it's like they set up this trap, they walk away, and then they're like, "Yeah, don't go over there, because <laughs> you're dumb." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't go over there. You don't know what you're talking about. You're a teenager. Well, I'll prove that I'm not dumb. Also, like the way that the cops every time the girls have anything to say, they just like repeat what the girls say in a really asshole way. <laughs> like yeah. they're like, "Oh, you found the evidence, huh?" <laughs> I was like, "All right, guys, come on. Like, you could yeah. be a little less mean." But oh, okay. So, so the the way that this happens is like just generally, um, they this all begins because Dina gets a phone Hella with speed phone. dial from her parents. She gets a phone. That's it. It's just <laughs> that she has a phone in her room as opposed to having to go in the living room. Yeah. Which I guess yeah, was cool. I didn't 90s. have a phone in my room. If you got a phone in your room, then your parents can't hear what you're saying and you're going to make some prank calls. Sure, yeah. I believe it. <laughs> but the whole speed dial being the thing that yeah, initiates speed dial was is weird. very funny. She's like, who do you have on speed dial? And she's like, well, it's just like three people. Yeah. It's like my grandma, my neighbor, my neighbor and you. And she's like, I'll call my sister. And then that's <laughs> and then like they're off to the race. Yeah, because then she starts like becoming really confident and like talking to this hot guy at her school. But like talking like this and he's like, oh, my God, who is this? And she's like, I'm the woman of your dreams. <laughs> and she's like, I look like Kim Basinger. <laughs> <laughs> And he's like, oh, golly gee whiz, we were going on a date. <laughs> wow, from Batman? <laughs> oh, that is a good reference, because I think this, I th or at least it's yeah. in the copyright 1990, so that would have been right. Mm -hmm. Right then, that's peak. when she's hot. That must have been why she would say that name, because mm -hmm. otherwise she's like, what? <laughs> like, the marrying guy? Yeah. <laughs> huh? Marrying man? What was that terrible Alec Baldwin movie with him oh. and Kim Basinger? Basinger? Basinger. Basinger. Kim Basinger. Kim Basinger. Basinger. I think it's Basinger. That's what I thought. I don't know. I'm <laughs> yeah. unfamiliar with the them. marrying man. They have to get married like three times. Oh. It's like a mob thing. Oh. I mean, this was like, I don't even know. I mean, I guess maybe because I was too young at that point. But I mean, I remember. Oh, like, man. Pre speed Sorry. dial. Ted Cruz won. <sighs> what? Yeah. Guys, we are have recording fun this. With this yes, we're, guys. We're, we're recording this on election night. Mm hmm. Uh, so yeah, just so you know, fuck. it's 725 and my boyfriend no. just texted to say that Ted Cruz won and the Republicans not only control the Senate, but control it more. Noodles. And why is there that? Every Monday, that was a very strange time for that you song to come by. And <laughs> just trying to keep a hold on you. BGs fix everything. This is your episode <laughs> <laughs> honestly wrong number is more quaint and sweet the rules of this universe make more sense than the world they we do. live in now uh, they do times smart Noodle. so uh, Noodle's right right ginsburg now. is going to die and trump will get a third seat uh, you've he heard it you heard it here I, you heard it here i'm sure you heard it elsewhere first <laughs> this is not a groundbreaking prediction no somebody's waiting to oh later <laughs> somebody somebody's I slightly touched her and she was done with this <laughs> very strange noodles being very unpredictable it's because she knows that there's like terror in the air mm -hmm. um oh. Uh, so, oh, uh, somebody opens the somebody door. opens the door and we're just like hello ted cruz is that no. you we're gonna punch your dumb face in no um so they um uh start the the prank calls chuck is her half brother yeah, yeah. And he comes to move in with them because he's been getting in trouble at his old school. And her dad is a dick. Are we agreed on that? <laughs> yeah, no, he's kind of mean. That he's sucks. mean. Well, he he was like nice, and then it, it that was the part where at some point in the book she's like she noticed her dad's behavior changing. But in a sense, it's like it was like the moment things get difficult, her dad is like totally a dick to the mom yeah. and her. Yeah, like which is 
I don't know. It just seems very indicative of probably who he is as a person. Yeah. It's like, okay, I have little control over my household, but the moment things aren't perfect yeah. in my way, I'm just going to take it out on my, my actual like kid that I've been living with. I mean, how they're like 15 or 16 or something yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah they're 16 like, cause they can drive like literally this, ha- this half kid comes in and it's like, he has almost like more respect and reverence for this like troubled kid than he does for his own daughter who he's been raising the whole time or whatever. Oh, yeah. To me, it felt like, so Chuck comes on the scene and the dad is like, you're on thin ice, buddy. And the second you mess up, I'm going to be there and it's curtains for you. And (laughs) coitins. And and the whole time I'm reading that, I'm like, uh, you started a second family. You left <laughs> yeah. your wife and you started a second family and that's a hundred percent what's going on with Chuck. So maybe oh. like welcome him into your home and treat him like your fucking son for two seconds, you piece of shit dad. Yeah, but the dad is a Mr. Baby Martinson. <laughs> and baby boomers are not known for going to empathy first. Most of them. Mm. Most of them aren't. The men particularly. Yes. Specifically that. So I feel like this was he was a very, I felt like, average dad for a teen in the 90s. Mm -hmm. Um, He did suck, though. I felt like he should have cut Chuck more slack. He like acted like his daughter like didn't exist at all. Yeah. Like I didn't get that. Really? Well, just I think he was just just, like dismissive of her. I think it was just Hmm. that especially I think just that one line of her mentioning how he was like taking it all out on them. I think that's what stuck with me. Oh, but I do like. Because um, we did a whole MFM about secret lives and seriously, like just hundreds of people with secret families. Oh, my just, God. Like, I think baby boomers is just like, well, again, men specifically. Yeah. That was just like a thing. But what was what was actually the one heartwarming part that I feel like is kind of connected with this novel that or novel <laughs> novella. I, I, the, it book? is funny because if you call it a novel, it seems like it shows it more respect than it deserves. <laughs> yeah, I would say book. book. <laughs> uh that usually when uh, secret families are found out, the siblings actually really end up getting along because it's like they're Shared having to trauma. share this kind yeah. of trauma. So I, I do like the one thing that I do like about this book was that Chuck and Dina actually like the novel they didn't go bond. where or yeah, it didn't go where I thought it would go where like he was going to be the killer or something like that. Yeah. He was like, the yeah, I was glad kid. he wasn't the killer. Yeah, I like that. So that part was nice. But yeah, it's always like. The dads are like, I'm so stressed because I have two families. And it's like, yeah, but you You, actually. And it's well, it's particularly weird because Chuck is only like, what, a year older than Dina. So that means like he barely had anything to do with him, which means the dad has barely had anything to do with him. This isn't like a new situation. This isn't a step brother. This is a half brother Mm -hmm. so like i love the the thing we're talking about most at this point is like i mean what's the morality of (laughs) yeah of what he did like can we forgive mr martinson because he's barely been in chuck's life those late hours at the phone company i'm so sure oh (laughs) i'm so sure here's the thing he bounced after like a year he was like i don't need any more of this child or this family or less i was thinking i was actually thinking about like people who like either have secret families or like ditch their families at like i feel like that was so much more common for the baby boomer generation than for ours or maybe we just don't hang out with people that would do that like our peers i'm just like if i if one of my friends was like oh i have a kid i just like don't pay see the kid i, yeah, I don't much. pay alimony and i don't see them and i don't care about them like i i would like i i, I could it's not like, be friends with that person <laughs> it's like how we were like what if like it used to be where two, yes, like a couple could the of be be of two different political parties, and if that happened now, it'd be like insane. Oh yeah, that um yeah, same there where it's like yeah, I don't know how I would like marry the two personalities I know of a person of like hey you're my friend but also like you had a kid and then you just like went and you had another kid and now you don't talk to the other kid the yeah. first kid. Yeah, I Who think yeah, what's the Christmas situation? I need to yeah. know these yeah. things. Yeah, I, I need details. <laughs> what are the, yeah, what's the custody situation? How much are... D- I certainly don't want to find out that your two teenage children are just now forming a relationship. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, it's 
here's the thing. I am not going to judge. I just want to know. And I'm going to talk about it on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hard judging. Of course I'm judging. <laughs> if, you, if someone had a secret fucking like kid and then they're well, like. But that's the thing is it doesn't even seem like it's. He doesn't have a secret family. He no. Just, he doesn't started care. a new family. Yeah. He was like, I don't need to talk to this kid and only took the kid when the mom was like, he's getting in too much trouble here. Yeah. Please help me for yeah. the love yeah. of God. Please. I'm a single mom and you obviously haven't been involved in his life. Hey guys, we're going to take a quick break from the show to talk to you about one of our sponsors, Everlane. There are a lot of things I like about Everlane. There is the ethics of Everlane. I would not buy a t-shirt for $50 if I knew it only cost $7 to make. Everlane makes it so you never overpay for quality clothes. The other thing I like is that they specialize in the type of clothes that I like to wear, which is like cool, high quality, like oversized tops. And then I walk around with that and like a baseball cap on and I look like I'm a famous person that in, when I'm just being comfortable and cool. But people will see me in like my cool like box tee and my baseball cap and then I'll put sunglasses on and it's like I'm famous don't talk to me I'm very busy right now so if you want to live the don't talk to me I'm famous lifestyle Everlane is there for you they make only premium essentials using the finest materials without traditional markups and they tell you their real costs so you know you're never overpaying they also want you to know what you're paying for and why they're radically transparent about every step in their process from the materials they use to the ethical factories they work with and because Everlane sells directly to you their prices are 30 to 50% lower than traditional retailers. Everlane's clothes look better, cost less, and last longer. Essentials like their Cotton Crew t-shirt are exactly what they should be. Simple, stylish, and made from quality materials. If you're like, I want to dress like Kelly, here are my favorite items that I enjoy from their website. I enjoy a square toe Chelsea boot in cedar, the cotton collarless belted shirt dress in red slash white stripe. I like the linen shirt dress in indigo. I like the Cotton Crew in brick lilac white stripe, the straight leg crop in golden brown, the clean silk shell in pale pink, the Renew long puffer in brick, the authentic stretch high-rise skinny ankle jean in washed black, the cashmere rib v-neck in black, the cashmere shrunken sweatshirt in dark gray Donegal. I enjoy all of their jeans. They've got high-rise skinnies, mid-rises, modern boyfriend. Their clothes are amazing. They're timeless essentials, no frills, just quality. And right now, you can check out our personalized collection at everlane.com slash teen creeps. Plus, you'll get free shipping on your first order. That's everlane.com slash teen creeps. Everlane.com slash teen creeps. E-V-E-R-L-A-N-E dot com slash teen creeps. And now back to the show. That mom had to be like, I need help. She was at the end of her rope. And so was the kid. Well, because the kid wasn't happy. Obviously, because he's acting out. If you have a kid that's one year old, that does not mean, or if you have kids that are one year apart, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that you spent a year with the one kid <laughs> and then you went and you made a new kid. No, that means that like three months <laughs> into that baby's Holy life. Holy shit, because gestation. Yes. Oh my because God. Because of gestation. Oh my God. So he was gone <laughs> Is this like months. an alien? Just like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not just like instantaneous. No, it's not like it's a not Cordelia like, pregnancy. Yeah. Oh <laughs> my God. <laughs> so he was done after three months. No wonder Chuck was getting in Wait, trouble. Wait, hold on. Hold but on. he has the heart of a hero. Wait, yeah. so if these kids are one year apart, let's do the math here. Yeah. These kids are one year apart in age. Mm -hmm. Nine months. Because that was pregnancy. it, right? Pregnancy. Yeah, I think so. He was 17. No, he was he had just turned 18 because he was going to be tried as an adult. That's right. Right. OK, so she's 16 and he's 18. So maybe they're two years apart. Still unacceptable. I, I mean, you just made obviously, me think we all agree like this is a big deal. This, this book is a big deal. Obviously, there's a crime. There's a murder, all that stuff, which they still underplay. Like they all saw a dead body and they're acting like it's not a big I deal. I can't believe they weren't puking for days. Uh, but the real trauma happened right before the book started, which is they learned that she learned that her dad had a secret family. I know. Like that happens. And then boom, now we're starting the story. And then now we're in this, <laughs> yeah. we're in this new family to this brother I've never met. And she, Dina phrases it so casually. She says, <laughs> so also like, I'm sorry, your best friend Jade has never heard of your half brother before. Cause she's like, my brother's coming here. And she's like, 
your brother, you don't have a brother. Wait, so did she not? That makes me think she didn't know. I think Dina did well, not she know. she says, my half-brother, <laughs> actually. He's yeah. my dad's son from his first marriage. I've only met him a few times. He's coming to Shadyside for his senior year. And then what? So then what year are they? Blah, blah, blah. Um, They're that's... at least 16. Because they can drive. I know that. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah, yeah. they each... But each Jade and Dina drive. I, I thought the car politics of this book was very realistic. Oh of my like god, negotiating it totally was. like with like who, when do that I get the very, car, yeah. and all that stuff. I liked that. Yeah. yeah, when when Jade's like, okay, my dad's out of town, but he's gonna be back tomorrow, so you have to get the car. Yeah, um, I was like, this is, this feels very real. This yeah. is like the most realistic. Yeah. Um. Also, I loved every Jade always has to have her clothing description before. It's like Jade because Jade the, is beautiful and fashionable. Yeah. Anytime someone is beautiful. Judable but fashionable. <laughs> uh, I want he all those always looks. Describes the, Her yeah. looks are amazing. It's very like clueless. She, yeah, yeah. She does a lot of mismatching and different. When patterns. she was wearing that, um, like yellow slicker when it was raining, I was like, that probably looks really cute. Because she, <laughs> like, I'm just picturing her, like, basically looking like a model, um, in this like cute. Uh, little raincoat and like is Dina even wearing a raincoat? Like Dina like looks terrible. She's like rolled around in a puddle. In my mind, she's, she's in a potato sack. <laughs> <laughs> she's like put a garbage bag on and, and, and like stood in a gutter yeah. for a while. And then I she's mean, like, let's ah. go find proof that Chuck's here. I said, <laughs> she's like, let's go in the dumpster, which is my home. <laughs> I mean, props oh to God. them for actually going in the dumpster. Yes, I they don't... went for it. I, I loved their yeah. adventures doing that. Yeah. I loved them like their little the, 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 so the thing i wanted to get to is maybe the most insane thing that happens in this book which is the girls are like so after the whole thing has happened and they've been chased by um uh the masked person that killed the woman um the husband of the woman sounds very much like the masked guy he also like they think he is the one who killed her so they're like we got to follow him around he works at what is the crazy name of the place? Allegra he Three. Allegra or? Three. Yeah, I was what like, was that? How is this an Italian restaurant? I didn't know what how? it was. It's the third Allegra. I don't what, know. They said Allegra, Allegra Three. Tre. <laughs> oh yeah, it'd be like Tresse or something. Yeah. Tresse. Yeah. When when they said Allegra Three, I kept thinking it was a movie theater with three. Like Los Feliz. That makes oh. way more sense. And then they get there and, and I'm like, this is a weird layout for a movie theater. But also they, maybe it wasn't this way in your books. I had a uh, hashtag condol. Mm. condol. Updated. Condol. Because when I, because <laughs> this time. all began, <laughs> yeah. when I was texting Lindsay and I was trying to tap in, type in all caps. And so you know how it doesn't correct you when it's all caps. So I typed in condol <laughs> in all caps. And then now my phone autocorrects Kindle. Yeah. Condol, and so we just say hashtag. Yeah, that's amazing. Condol. And I named my Kindle Condol. Condol. Um, hashtag all caps Condol. <laughs> um, there it usually said it Allegra three with the, the word three I, spelled I, I, out. I. Yeah, 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 but yeah. one of the times it was I I I. So it's like the third. <laughs> and I was like Allegra the third. Yeah, I I seriously yeah. was like, are they saying Allegra the third? Yeah. Like what is? So they go. So the girls are like, we have to go undercover. <laughs> To this restaurant. So they go to the so funny. drama With department. Wigs. Yeah. And I get want... the wigs from the drama department. And then put fake beauty marks on their faces. I don't think I want that's that montage. where she even got them. She like got them from her mom. Because oh, they set it right. up in the beginning that her mom is a hairdresser. So her mom she's has She's dying wigs. her hair. Or she's so... giving her hair a moisture treatment yeah it was like yeah, gel is something like gel or oh yeah. no 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 she yeah she's putting gel straight up gel in her hair but this like to give it like um kind of make it crinkly or something yeah, yeah. i she, remember that look girls did that in the 90s so when you put a ton of gel in your hair makes it look really wet it was just wet all the time <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like wet all the it's like wrestlers <laughs> yeah so that it's <laughs> under control <laughs> <laughs> all all wrestlers with long hair, it looks like their hair is just wet all the time. Also, yeah. they're sweaty. Yeah. I feel like it's... <laughs> also. When, also, it's wet. <laughs> when you do that look and you have, like, just, like, globs and globs of, like, L.A. looks. Yeah. Yeah. Gel, and you just put that in. When you have long hair, it just looks very wet. And it's, like... like Crunchy. You, it's crunchy. It's so, like if you, like, grabbed it. And then it gets, like, white flakes if you crunch it too much. Oh, mm -hmm. no. Oh yeah, and and it would be green. It, mm -hmm. it would be like white or like clear or green, it's like aloe vera color. Yeah, 
And it says it's green in this yeah. book. So she, this girl's putting like LA looks in her hair. Yeah. She is going to town. And then she's like, do you know we can make your hair spiky? And Dina's like, no, I'm the boring one. I know. And she's <laughs> she, like, I'm she, too she said that. Yeah. yeah she's, she's like, no, I serve the boring purpose in yeah. this book. She's like, you're I'm beautiful. Because I'm a straight woman. <laughs> um, so they put on these wigs. They put on like a, a lot of makeup because they're like, it makes us look older. Yeah. They probably looked like insane clowns. Like yeah. they... It coming. looks like Steffi from the Steffi Can't Come Out to Play. Where it's like, are you 13-year-old prostitutes? Do we need to call your parents? Because they walk in and instantly the hostess is like, how old are you? Um, and like, uh, did the agency send you? And Jade's like, yes, the agency sent us. Let yeah. us in. Yeah. Jade's about to win a fucking Oscar. <laughs> and Dina... Just, oh my oh, God. The whole time too, Dina is so stupid that like when Jade is like, Jade's like, uh yeah, so Linda, Linda Morrison, she was the one who told me, and the whole time Dina's like, huh? <laughs> What's happening? Yeah, how did you get that, that information? She's like, well, she said Mrs. Morrison, and then called her Linda after. So <laughs> you know, just paying attention, <laughs> just listening to people. Just like Dina, Earth to Dina. I know your half brother's on trial for murder, but can we focus? She's like, it's called active listening, Dina. <laughs> And Dina's like, I'm sorry, what? You have to be interested to be interesting. <laughs> and so, oh. like, it, multiple times, Jade is, like, killing it with the acting. And Dina has no idea. Like, Dina's literally just running around following Jade and being like, what? Where are we going? What's happening? It's just so fucking weird. It's pretty it's weird. So that weird. She doesn't like, know what's happening. Why doesn't it? Can we just make it Jade? It's just Jade. Yeah. We don't need Dina. Jade meets a cute boy named Chuck who's troubled. Yeah. There, there we go. go. And then, the yeah, then Dina can be the side character that... Yeah. Well, because Jade gets kind of incapacitated at the end, but not for very long. So yeah. I almost thought that it was like, that was going to be Dina's moment to like... You but she's too. Her, Dina's time to her, shine. Her heroic moment was opening the w- opening the window back open or <laughs> oh, something. Yeah. Like that was her big and triumphant... And shaking Jade awake. Oh, yeah, yeah. Waking oh, yeah. She's up. like, yeah. Jade, wake up. And then they're like, let's climb on the tree. And I'm like, I don't know how this is going to help you. It would be cool. I mean, I did like the ending, I but I was it. like, what if the tree fell on? That's what I wanted. But... That'd be fun. Or like, yeah, like if he's, so he's like chopping it or he's, he's not chopping. He's like chainsawing. I would have liked if like the branch they were on just like falls down and oh, hits, Jesus. hits him. That would have been great. I mean, they would have been fine because again, they saw a, a they saw a dead body and, you know, they saw a poor woman bleeding out and yeah. like li- literally the least of their concerns. No, yeah, yeah. They were like, oh, no. Also, okay. every, every, <laughs> everyone was just like, even it was like, well, I guess the assistant quit because other things. But it's just like that thing of like somebody just died and everyone's just sort of like, well, that's not the issue. The issue is like these kids are getting into trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Someone just died. No, that's not the issue. The issue is. Sneaking around. It's <laughs> going <laughs> downstairs. <laughs> Imagine Dina doing that sound effect that she's like crawling around. <laughs> Jade is like, you are worthless. Yeah. You are like, worse than worthless. Stop doing this. <laughs> hey guys, we wanted to take a quick break from the show to talk to you about one of our sponsors, Zola. Dun, 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 dun. That is the sound of wedding bells. And if you didn't know what I was doing, I apologize for not communicating that clearer. Why is that relevant? Zola is a wedding company that will do anything for love. They're reinventing the wedding planning and registry experience to make the happiest moment in couples' lives even happier. From engagement to wedding and decorating your first home, Zola is there, combining compassionate customer service with modern tools and technology, all in the service of love. So first things first, I recently got engaged. I'm very happy. I will say that planning a wedding is a very stressful thing. Zola's the easiest way to plan your wedding and register. 500,000 couples have used Zola, so join them. Zola takes the stress out of wedding planning. They have free wedding websites, your dream wedding registry, an affordable save the dates and invitations, and easy to use planning tools. You can conveniently manage everything online and in one place. It saves so much time for couples. So you start with a free wedding website. It's so easy, and it seriously just takes minutes to set up. Over 100 beautiful wedding website designs you can choose from. You can fit any style, every type of wedding. If you think that you're too unique, give it a try. You will be very surprised. Also, you can put your Zola registry on your wedding website so guests can get all the details they need 
And they can buy your wedding gift in one convenient and beautiful place. Because let's be real, 90% of the reason why everybody gets married is for A, taxes, B, getting presents from people that you don't usually see, and C, love. Great. So once you get those things straightened out, then you can build your dream registry at Zola. Yay, 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 the gifts. So Zola makes registering for newlywed life very easy. Their store has the widest selection of gifts at all different price points. There's something for every different type of guest to give. Also, free shipping and free returns. Price matching. More. Not only that, you can create funds for your honeymoon, future home, new puppy, anything you want, blah, blah, blah. Anything. Plus, you can register for gift cards, too. For things like Delta, Southwest, Hulu, Home Depot, even more. Also, they have the best completion discount, 20% off remaining gifts on your registry starting right after your big day. Listen, as I said before, I'm planning my wedding right now. I've been on Zola's website. It is super easy to navigate. I love that a lot of the things that would bring you stress for planning is all in one place. Things that you wouldn't even think of that would be stressful are all right here. So it's not, it's very simple. You can create your website, your registry, the invites and paper being there too is really, I really like that. And then planning is just so much easier with Zola. They have customizable checklists. There's a guest list manager, which is like huge. This website is super, super helpful. I really am glad that um, that I found it. It really has made planning the wedding a more fun and exciting thing rather than like, oh, gosh, there's all these like details about the wedding that are just floating in space. And I just have no idea what to tackle first and when. And so I really, really love Zola. So are you sitting there? You you just got in, you just got proposed to you're sitting there thinking, OK, what's the next step here? Right. We just have the wedding. No, no, no. Don't worry about all the deets. Use Zola. You can start your free wedding website and also get $50 off your registry on Zola. Go to Zola.com slash teen creeps. That's Z-O-L-A dot com slash teen creeps. And now back to the show. And then there was that also that um, like false stakes of like, they try to go in the dumpster and then a guy's like, hey, <laughs> what are you guys doing in this alleyway? And they're like, we're lost. And he's like, get the hell out of here. And it's it's not open yet. Here are the hours in which is it, o- it is open. I'm giving helpful information. Yeah. These are the hours in which I will be busy chopping a salmon <laughs> and you will be free to dumpster die. <laughs> and I did like too that they like go in the dumpster and then like someone just dumps like loose garbage on them i love that and they're like to be expected yeah yeah <laughs> they're like wow they're it's really chill gross about here. being and they're oh and there are also rats everywhere <laughs> so, like, rats are running over their feet there are rats in the dumpster and they're like well you know what chuck's life is on the line so let's yeah. not even give it a second thought i mean they these are definitely the most active uh heroines yes of mm. Any R.L. Stein book I can think of. They definitely, like, are active in, like, tr- like trying to be proactive and mm-hmm. also, like, literally, like, are running all around. Yeah, literally active. Literally active. They're, like, running and driving and di- dumpster diving. Coming and- up with ideas. I mean, they've used, I think, all... F- they probably ended up using three out of four of their parents' cars. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, they were like, all right, we're going to do the Corvette. We're going to do the vet. <laughs> Yeah, but I was like, yeah. I still am confused about this town. Yeah, like, the apostrophe V. Vet, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The vet. I, I'm like confused about this town because it, it's like Chuck is like a small town and she's like, yeah, we're a bunch of hicks. But it's like, it seems like just a normal suburb. It's pretty normal. Yeah. Like it I doesn't mean, feel. I guess if you were moving from an actual city to a suburb, yeah. you'd be like, this is fucking boring. But if, because was Chuck from like the town over? Or like the city. I feel like over Chuck was from like town. something like New York City, somewhere oh, like okay. big. I feel I, I mean, that's the vibe I was. But feeling. even like because I'm from San Diego, and even going from like near downtown San Diego to Irvine, where I went to college, it was like, what the fuck? Oh yeah, it's like nothing. This is nothing. Because I thought it was like the dad had to be within like spitting distance of both families yeah. that he could go back like oh, on the right. weekends and go back yes. and forth. And then again, like, but was he? Yeah, I don't. She was. She had met him a few times. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I have to know more about the shitty dad. Also, like, yeah, because <laughs> fascinated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, if that's the case, then 
right? Like, let's say you're a shit dad Mm -hmm. and you're like, I don't want to be in this child's life. Wouldn't you like move across the fucking country? Like, you'd be like, I need to start my new life like very far away. No, because so many stories of secret families, it's people living on the same fucking block or like just down the street, stuff like that. That's like, really? Yeah, it's that to me, that to me is more that like, just wow. doing research and like reading about it. It's That's like, it's more juggle. common as like down the, like maybe not on the same street, but definitely like on the same, like in the same, like, you know, general area. Like, wow. because it's that thing of like, well, I can, that they're never going to run into each it. other and they're never going to know, you know? So it's like, but it's convenient for me. Cause I can just zip around the corner before I get right. You know what you so got to do? Like, Burbank versus Glendale. <laughs> yeah, that's got my you got secret Glendale Matt family, club? and I got my secret Burbank yeah, family. Yeah, I was gonna say Burbank versus like, um, like Brentwood or like uh, Baldwin Hills or something. Oh, that's far. No, that's too far. That's too, too far. far? That's okay, too you far, can't dude. have a secret Here's Santa Monica do. family Let, and no, a secret. Let's try to figure out the sweet spot then. Okay, no, it's literally Burbank like, to I guess Los Feliz. No, no, because people come to Los Feliz. No, you have to be really close. I think you have to be. It's only twenty miles on the border. You need to be on. (laughs) Yeah, seriously, you have to be on the border of a school district. So they would meet each other. Family, no, one of your family (laughs) is in one school district. LAUSD and Glendale. That's what it is. Uh, Well, I was going to say you could have. You have to make sure that each family gets their own Starbucks, which is pretty easy. You know what I mean? That yeah. So I think you do Atwater and Glendale. Yeah, yeah. Atwater is technically LA, so your kids are going to LAUSD. Yeah. Uh, I think you guys are Glendale. Are, I think we're you guys planning. Are we're scheming it. for it. I think you guys are secret, pushing it. But this is the thing: to have our own secret it's, families. It's we far. have no families, but we have to plot out our secret families. <laughs> I just can't. Like, I I could not be able to do. I'm just imagining Santa Monica. Okay. Okay. How no. about just because I keep bringing this up? What about like Burbank and Sun Valley? Yeah. I think if you those go, two places if you do go not north, go into yeah. each other's space. I, I think if Whereas you, like Burbank, Los Feliz, or Glendale, it's like everybody's going to those places. Nobody's going to Sun Valley. Nobody. Yeah. Except if you, you uh, except if you guest on Twitch stuff. Yeah. You are most likely going to Sun Valley. <laughs> um I'd say yeah. I say yeah. If you do any of those like kind of northern valley, like Silmar, mm-hmm. perfect. Sun mm-hmm. Valley, perfect. And then you get your family in the lower parts of SGV. Yeah. I think you're you're it doing like it great. just a brief freeway right away. I think you have right, to. We settled yeah, that. You, you can't. I think you cannot. Bad dads. Yeah. Bad Here's dads. some tips. Listen up. up. Shit yeah. dads. Shit hey, dads. If you're a shitty dad and you live in the Los Angeles greater greater area, yeah. if you live in like Los Angeles County even, don't don't be anywhere except for Silmar yeah. and Burbank. I think you can't. Here's the problem. You can't cross like central LA because that's so much traffic. It's too much. It's too much. Okay. So I think you have to relegate yourself to like, yeah. Cause otherwise yeah. you have like an hour and a half drive. In no, front you of can't you. do it. Yeah. You can't do it. You, you can't have, be more than, you could maybe like eight miles. try and get something no. that's like on the Metro line. Yeah. Like two things. Cause then you could just pop on. They don't know where you're going. Nobody. Yeah. And your families aren't using the Metro. No. Yeah. yeah. It's shit. So then you do it, and you're like, I'm trying to save the environment. You look like a great dad to your kids because you're so Ooh, environmental. Honey, yeah. what are these bank cards? Like, what are these metro cards? She's like, uh. <laughs> I'm saving the environment. Yeah. Shut up. She's like, oh my god, my this hero. man of mine. Why don't we renew our vows? <laughs> and you're like, oh my god, let's do it uh, in four weeks. <laughs> well, that was like that. Um, then you've got a Mrs. Doubtfire situation. <laughs> There's that. Was the Futurama episode where it's the shapeshifter who is like he he meets all these. Um, like different women and, and and he like they're the last of their species and he's like well I'm also the last of your species so we have to get married oh. but then it turns out he's like he planned all the weddings to all these different aliens on the same day oh my and god it's like he's like you, you know how expensive a ship a shape shifting tux is <laughs> because it's like from like Leela to like a spider woman to like a weird octopus like woman like all these different shapes and it's like That's but it's funny. just like you know that, of course that you know again yeah. it's that thing like yeah literally. I mean, again, in a lot of the stories I was reading, it's like a cross town kind of stuff. Wow. Yeah. Because that it's just so weird. More convenient. That made me think of that episode of X Files, um, Small Potatoes, yeah. where the guy like shape shifts into, because he has like muscle tissue in his skin so he can like flex his muscles and then like look like anybody. Yeah. Um, science. Yeah. Because of science. Oh, uh, but so science he, like, causes that. He impregnates like several different women Ew. in the town. It's very bad. It's like they're like, it's rape. This is fucked up. Ew. Um, 
but he has like a vestigial tail and then like it's passed down to those kids. And so they're like, why are all these kids being born with vestigial tails? Yeah. Hmm. It's because of him. Also, I would suggest watching that episode because David Duchovny is really good in it. He has to pretend to be that guy pretending to be him. And it's (laughs) really funny. (laughs) When that guy wrote the... He wrote, he wrote like some of the best. Mike Ruckman's final re- repose. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. What what is his name? He wrote it's, some of the best ones. Well, it's it's Darren Morgan. To me that I never watched. I think it's X-Files. Darren Morgan, isn't it? And still haven't. And his brother, because there's Darren Morgan and the other Morgan. There's like his brother yeah. wrote a lot of the show. Who ended up writing? Um, what's the? There's that one show. It's like in the Middle East where it's like undercover agent. Not Naomi Watts. Anyway, I can't remember the name of the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, is it Naomi Watts? No, <laughs> Naomi Watts like it's a little mini Naomi Watts. Oh, mm. I can't remember what the name Unfamiliar. of the show is. Mm. Anyway, anyway, uh, uh, we got Baby to Watts. that. Oh, because those girls are oh, because the dad is bad at being a bad dad, and also those girls are very bad at pretending to be other people. Yeah, but people yeah. believe it for a second. I mean, or do you think that the, her... the woman who was bored because she's like, honey. I don't know. That was my impression. <laughs> I just did like okay. a thing. Yeah, you did like a like like uh, like dance move, and you then did, like yeah. you just did like, like holding a, a cigarette. Well, yeah. she's like you did like a like a wave. Yeah, yeah. You're not and fooling then, me, honey. And, yeah. and then like yeah, listen, you're not moon. fooling me. I'm a, a I've been around the block with your hand. Yeah, you you did a half moon. That's my impression of a <laughs> and waiter. Then we were I don't waiting, know. and and then that was it. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> and then you went. I don't know. Well, because because they was it was it the the owner of the restaurant or, you know, murder man, was he the one who called them out for not being, he, or did she, no, she, she called them out first. She was like, you're not from the agency. N- no, oh, no, she he accepted it. it, but he, yeah. Then he goes, look, I've known from the beginning and they're like, <gasps> Oh no. And he's like, that you're not over 18. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> She's like, listen, Linda Morrison told me that there was going to be a job opening. Actually, her cousin told me I'm best friends with her cousin. That's yeah. right. Her cousin, <laughs> uh, and, uh, her cousin's name is, N- Neela and <laughs> Neela and I have been friends since about kindergarten when we first had Mrs. Morris for a teacher and he's like I don't need this information She's like, well, let me back up. it all began when I was born <laughs> a mere to sperm a and he didn't care about me <laughs> I was a second family child he had a third family <laughs> sound familiar <laughs> and she like looks right at Dina and Dina's like why are you doing this <laughs> <laughs> and Dina's like no this is great who's Linda yeah. and Dina's like huh <laughs> what <laughs> Why are we here? Together. So, you know. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, up front. Oh, and then he's like, oh, you're so such go getters. Yeah, and they're like, like, you can have the job. And they're like, we're so insulted that you would even not trust us that we will be leaving, sir. Uh, I was like, this is the weirdest excuse. Yeah, Jade, just say you'll start on Monday. Yeah, just say and then never show up. It's yeah. fine. But Jade was so like, she was like, I could never work for somebody so suspicious. And I was like, oh, what yeah. a line. That <laughs> phrasing. <makes> suspicious. <laughs> so suspicious. It, is it just I hate suspicious bosses. <laughs> is it just me or like some, there were certain parts in this book where I was like, are these just typos or is this just the way people talk? <laughs> like, or the way he writes? I think it's the way he thinks teens talk. Because some of it is a little Cause oh, weird. Yeah. He Cause kept they, saying like, hey, do you want to watch some tapes? Yeah. And I yeah. was like, yeah. did anyone ever phrase it that way? Because I know I didn't. No. Yeah. yeah. Well, because there's a Not one point the where. 90s. Was it where Dina was talking to the the high school hunk and like, does does he say something wrong or she says something wrong and they like correct it? And at first, I thought it was just a misspelling, and then they uh-huh. like call it out, and I was just like, "Oh, wait, maybe that like rethink familiar. every." It made me rethink like everything, because even though, yeah, the way people would say stuff like, "Where are you going?" or like, "Where is it up to right now?" and you're like, "Nobody." Yeah. <laughs> no, there was some weird. Oh, there was this part. <laughs> this is how boring Dina is. So she's like thinking about Rob Morell, who's the hot guy. <laughs> yeah, Rob oh, Morell. On the hunt for the killer. Dun, dun. On the hunt. On the hunt. On the hunt. Everybody say. (laughs) (laughs) Whoa. Yeah, they're close. Mm. I wonder what they're doing. I forgot why I picked up my phone. Oh, yeah. Person on foot. Look, they're bored. Mm. It's a a Tuesday night. Get your little fly on. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, you want to go for a spin? If I had access to a helicopter, hell yeah. Did you hear about that? couple that died instantly after their wedding yes crashing the helicopter that's so no. sad <laughs> it's really sad but like i mean can you imagine can you imagine it's like just such an extreme way to die it's so it's too much <laughs> don't like 
what? Come on. Come Don't on die with absurdly. That. Die yeah. in a normal way. Die we're we're normal allowed way. to process it correctly instead of laughing. Yeah. It's like, oh, you're dead, but that's absurd. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I just, I feel like if, if I had gone to that wedding and someone's like, oh my God, did you hear like their helicopter crash? I would have like laughed at first and been like, that's so mean. Yeah. I would have thought that they were joking. And they're like, no, seriously, their helicopter just crashed. Oh my God. Did you hear about Ted and Linda? After their wedding, that horse they hopped on to ride across the field in a romantic way, it turns out it wasn't a field. It was a cliff. (laughs) (laughs) And he's like, what? What? (laughs) Like, no, really. The horse... um, the horse got spooked by her veil and it jumped off and a it, cliff. Yeah. And we thought that that was just a straight up prairie, but no, it was a canyon. And, and like there the was wedding planner there. is like in big trouble. Yeah. Because she was supposed to stake out that area. But she didn't because she, she was busy looking after the doves. Yeah. And that's why, anyways, that's why you don't order doves at your that's wedding. That's why you don't do live it's animals too at your much wedding. Trouble. I bought the suit. I can't return it. <laughs> the dove suit. Yeah. The, oh, yeah. Made of doves. But they had. To, they're still alive, though. That's why it's yeah. really beautiful. Because they all. When they all fly, you fly. Yeah. <laughs> you just look like a cloud. <laughs> when they um. all fly, you fly. <laughs> hey guys, we wanted to take a quick break from the show to talk to you about one of our sponsors, Lola. What is Lola? Lola is a modern approach to feminine care. Do you ever think to yourself? I'm keeping track of all the food that I put into my body, what I'm drinking. Why am I not paying attention to what I'm sticking up my vajuani during my period? That's right. I'm talking about tamps and pads. Enter Lola. Lola is a female founded company offering a line of organic cotton tampons, pads, liners and all natural cleansing wipes. Did you know that the FDA doesn't require brands to disclose a comprehensive list of ingredients in their feminine care products? So most of them don't. Lola offers complete transparency about the ingredients found in their tampons, pads, liners, and wipes. Get this, Lola makes your month a little bit easier. No more running around for last-minute trips to the drugstore trying to get yourself some tamps because, oops, you forgot that you're out of feminine hygiene products and your period's here. They've got a subscription that's fully customizable. You can choose your mix of products, mix of absorbency, number of boxes, frequency of delivery. Their subscription is super flexible. You can change, skip, cancel your subscription at any time. You can cancel, skip an order, or modify your subscription at any time. Lola emails you two days before your boxes ship, and they pride themselves on no surprises or gimmicks. And Lola now offers cleansing wipes. They're safe for use anywhere on the body. They're the first biodegradable, all-natural wipe of their kind, perfect for a midday refresh. They're individually packaged and perfect for on-the-go. They're gynecologist-approved and hypoallergenic. So listen, Lindsay and I, we love our Lola subscriptions. Our products come right to our doors. I really like that it's in a sleek box and it has these cute little tampons that have these pretty light blue uh, wrappings. Um, I like knowing that what I'm putting in my body is 100% cotton free of dyes, synthetic products, all of that. I like knowing that Lola has my back and that because it's a subscription service, I don't have to worry about not having feminine hygiene products on me. So you know what? I'm in. I'm a big fan of Lola. So let's get you guys in on some discounts. For 40% off all subscriptions, visit mylola.com and enter promo code CREEPS40 when you subscribe. Again, for 40% off all subscriptions, visit mylola.com, that's M-Y-L-O-L-A dot com, and enter promo code CREEPS40, that's C-R-E-E-P-S 40 when you subscribe. And now back to the show. Okay. So this is a part where I was like, I was like, Stein, this is not what people think in their heads. So she's like, in fact, Rob Morrell was the first thing she'd been able to think about besides Chuck's trouble. What did he mean? He wanted to talk to her on the phone. Did he know she'd made those calls? Did he think she was after his bod? <laughs> I was like, do you not bod? <laughs> you cannot think this in your head. <laughs> This you is know, very embarrassing. Incorrect. Now we know you're not real. I just really want to see this made into an ad. I want this to be adapted into a, an episode of a TV show where it's just like a lot of like hazy Dina shots where it's like she's just thinking about something and then it's just like, oh no, oh no. And then it's like and she just snaps to attention. Yeah. What? Huh? Huh? What? That would be um, so funny. Can you guys, can someone make this and then cast me and Lindsay as Dina and Jade? 
Yes. And then um, we'll just like run around and jump in trash cans <laughs> <laughs> with rats. With rats. Wait, do, do you want to be? It. Do you want to be Dean or do you want to be Jade? I'd be happy being either. I'd be happy either being like what or being like listen. Um, Who would you rather be? I'd be happy being either, but I do sort of feel like uh, Kelly's role is Jade and my role is Dina. <laughs> I don't know. It would require some wigs for sure for <laughs> yeah. both of us. Well, we already need wigs to we need be wearing wigs. wigs. <laughs> I think for the fake wigs, wigs on wigs on wigs, we use our hair when they're <laughs> like, oh, oh, I put on a wig and everyone. And then also, this is not going to be very high budget. No. So like, do you want to be Chuck? Yeah, I'll be Chuck. You can yeah. be Chuck. It's just that's such a funny name because I just keep imagining like West Memphis three, like. Yes. Like tall, gawky kind of goth, but still sort of handsome. Yeah. Like he'd probably clean up really nice, but he probably doesn't wash his face a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and he probably doesn't drink enough water. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'd still, yeah, but I would have to like lose a lot of weight, but then like just eat like weird, like just eat like weird, like meat or something. I don't know. Bad. Like, yeah, you'd have yeah. to yeah. eat a lot of like beef jerky. Yes. Thank you. That's what I was. Because <laughs> then it's like a lot of like, Proteins, and smoking mm. a lot of cigarettes. Yeah, mm. yeah. Like one earring that yeah. I like pierced myself, like through an apple or whatever. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Listen, we go method here. Yeah, yeah. So I'm very committed to this role, to this low budget. <laughs> Lindsay and lifetime. I will be practicing in in trash cans around Los Angeles in dumpsters, and I'm just sitting here wondering, man, what's what's better, an apple or an ice cube? If you were going to pierce your ear. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I here's the isn't thing. Isn't it supposed to be an ice cube? Well, you I numb think you it? ice it first, but the apple is because then it goes all the way through. It isn't you oh. heat up the needle, so then it's like, and then it stabs into the apple. Oh. Yeah, I think you. Could, yeah. Also, yeah, you could hold it still better. The or ice cube would be pretty, pretty slippery. <laughs> That's the thing, and also it's <laughs> hard. Slippery. So you can't like once you hit it. What if you don't go all the way through because the needle bounces off of it, and then you're stuck with a needle part way in your ear? Ew. Ew. Yeah, ow, ow, ow. ow. No, thanks. Ow, ow, ow. I mean, I feel like more people have done that than I would give people credit for, but I've never done that. I've never like done that. People probably like stopped that. doing that after the 80s, like piercing their own. <laughs> well, because Claire's and happened. Stuff. Yeah, because you could do it for like $5. Cause, like, because Claire's hit the scene and it changed everything. Yeah. We were, we were living in a post Claire's world. Also, moms didn't care anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like, true. Yeah, pierce your ears. That's what's normal. Yeah. I remember my mom like kept asking me if I wanted to. And I was like, no, for a really long time because I was afraid it would hurt. It and does hurt. It does hurt. Yeah. Yeah. The person that did mine did it both of them at the same time. At the, and, you mean like simultaneously? Yeah. Oh. She like lined it up. And Whoa, had, like, what the things, fuck? Like, Kunk, Kunk. Oh, hell yeah. And I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's like a wishbone just around your head. Yeah. Just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh, speaking of things uh, about your appearance that look normal or not normal, uh, this passage kind of jumped out at me at the <laughs> beginning. Guess who's just become the hot couple of the month, she said. Oh, yeah. Who said Dina? Bruce Kipnis and Sherry Murdoch. Really? Dina said. Bruce and Sherry were the two fattest kids in the school. First of all, they're rude. both in my geography class and they walked in holding hands this morning, said Jade. Well, I guess that's nice, said Dina. <laughs> yeah, probably no one else would want to go out with either of them, said Jay. Oh, and I've got to tell you what Mrs. Overton was wearing. You know she cut her hair really short, almost as short as a boy's. I was like, Jade fucking sucks. Yeah, Jade sucks. Jade sucks. It's like, you little shit. Oh. Well, yeah, it's like I couldn't, you know, that that was like, obviously Dina was, what was it? Like straightish, too straightish, too normalish. Yeah. I like that passage of like, that those like using the ish on all of them but it's like yeah. she seems like she's not anything like she's not even dorky she's just yeah plain she's jane just nothing yeah but then what she's is like jade cheese but like what is jade is she a cool kid is she a troubled kid because she she's, seems kind of she's bitchy cool kid it seems like she's like yeah. she's a hot girl she's got she's a hot girl with a bit of a tood yeah but it's like why is she hanging out with dina like why probably she... because she looks because she looks prettier, prettier next to her oh yeah and like dina is like a nothing person, so yeah. she just like yeses whatever. Yeah, I was like, about to say, she Dina's says. a yes girl. Jade can kind of just like get her ego fulfilled by having yeah. Dina around. And Dina does whatever she wants. I yeah, yeah. Hmm. I also have something here, um, where we find out. So when Chuck like first comes into the scene, he's not very nice. Um, Dina's like, I'm going to make him feel Fairly. at home, so I'm going to make him I'm a bowl of cereal. Cure him some cereal, and then he <laughs> throws it in the sink. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, she not only pours him a bowl of cereal, but she puts like fruit on top of it. She yeah. puts like blueberries on top of it. And then she sets the milk there and he's like, what's this? <laughs> like, I thought it would be nice if we ate some cereal he's together like, okay, before whatever. school. And he's like, okay. And he pours some milk on it. And the mom's like, we're going to be late. And he's like, fine. And then he just he dumps, dumps the whole, the whole thing. thing. And she's like, and like, this what? is her response. Was he really crazy? <laughs> <laughs> That's how boring she is. She thinks he's crazy. Yeah, he, he does, does that. that. And she's like, well, he really is a delinquent. <laughs> well, it's, it's like, if the mom is like, no, we have to go. It's like, did she, did Dina not? It feels like Dina's not yeah, with the program. Did she like, not like know what time yeah, it was? Like her mom and Chuck are like, no, we're going to school right now. Why are you I know, making us this eloquent? Like you're making the most like, you know, eloquent bounty of a breakfast cereal. It's like a Tuesday for at school. Yeah. And like also they're gonna be late. It's like at this point they have to be at school by like nine. It's eight forty five. <laughs> Dina is weird on so many levels in this scenario. <laughs> she's like coming downstairs. She's like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to make everyone breakfast. And she sends out like bowls and <laughs> pour cereal. And she's like, cool. What a good job I did. Like, I wow. made breakfast for everyone. It's like 757 and school starts at eight. She's like, now we can all sit together as a family. And bond. <laughs> also, like her, the things that scandalize her. So she, um, her cheeks were burning as if he had slapped her. He poured some milk on his cereal, not caring if it slopped out onto the table. <laughs> <laughs> he just, she like, just squeezes he didn't her butt. <laughs> and then, without a word, Chuck stood up and dumped his cereal into the sink. Dina just stared at him. What was the matter with him? She wondered. Was he really crazy? <laughs> she's, she's so stupid. She's so scandalized. D Dina, Dina is that, that person. Read the passage is pitch perfect. It's so brilliant. He was really crazy. <laughs> There is milk everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you just made there me think. There wasn't time to clean it up. It's just like, <laughs> just like rub. You see, she's like uses her hand to do it. Yeah. She's just so mad. Like, okay, I guess it. But no, it reminds me of like, I feel like there's always growing up. There's like the person where it's like your parents are chill. So then you have to like, it's, it's like the, cause you, you know, it's always like the strict them. parents. Where, yeah. yeah. It's like, okay, if you have strict parents, then you're going to like rebel against the system and meddle and hippie or whatever but it's like this is the opposite where the parents mm -hmm. are just chill and then so then the kid is like uptight and it's like yeah yeah it's like it's neurotic I will, I will never drink or do drugs and her parents are like just sitting on the couch like watching tv that's great honey you know like <laughs> yeah they're like you're fine it's like i'd almost I, that almost like the way that you're playing her is almost more like giving her more character or like more like yeah. more of a quirk where you'd yeah. imagine dina would be like wearing a cross all the time and her parents are like yeah we think it's weird like <laughs> Like we're not religious. Yeah, like we, we never know. made her go to church. None of our friends are religious. We don't know where this happened. <laughs> I know. Um, like, oh, morning, Dina. Good morning. And she's like wearing a like sweater vest and yes. has a sweater tied across yeah. her shoulders yeah. and just like this perfect pleated skirt and her hair up in a ponytail. And she's wearing pearls, but she's also like, I made everyone cereal. <laughs> Let's hold hands and say grace. Yeah. And the family's like, what? what? Where did this? Isn't start? that a huge nightmare? If you're like at when you were a kid and you <laughs> went to someone's old dance and say oh grace when, when you go to someone's house and then the parents are like Kelly do you, or like the like Lindsay do you want to say, say grace and you're like no <laughs> like a we never did that growing up so I never knew what to say so I was always like please don't make me do this please don't make me do this um because I literally like what do you say you say like thank you God for the food and the good times <laughs> 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 what. Thank you, God, for the food and the and good, good times. times. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> Everybody, chow down. <laughs> yeah, chow down. Um, also, okay, there's just like Jade's inner, I'm, I'm sorry, Dina's inner monologue too. So this is when Jade and Dina are trying to tell Chuck that like Fear Street is scary and Chuck like <laughs> doesn't believe them. And so she's like, Fear Street isn't nonsense, said Jade. She sat down on the arm of the chair next to Chuck. Dina thought she looked beautiful in the dim light and also afraid. It's like, <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Well, this is my question just because I haven't read, you know, as many as you have. Like, fear, the mention of Fear Street almost was like the version of like when like the MCU TV shows are like the Avengers. Like, yeah. it almost felt like yeah, everything yeah. stopped. And it was like, Fear Street. Like, is that how it is in all of these? That Fear Street is just like, no matter what, no matter what 
you could be a jock, you could be a nerd. It's like when anybody mentions Fear Street, everyone like goes quiet. Well, yes and no. It's like everybody's like, yeah, Fear Street's creepy. Stay away from it. But this is the first book where it is treated with like the reverence that I think it should be treated with yeah. every time. Where Considering. It's like, no, no, no. Like Fear Street's real. Like, do not laugh at this. Shit is fucked up there. As opposed to like, <laughs> what a stupid name. Yeah. Well, because usually it's someone new. new to Shady Slide slash Fear Street. They their parents buy a creepy house on Fear Street mm-hmm. and they're like, oh, what a name. Who would name a street Fear Street? And then someone that they know is like, you don't know about Fear Street is named after Simon Fear. He like fucked up the town and like was evil you and his burned down, house. burned down houses on the corner. And then everyone's <laughs> like, that sounds fake. OK. And then like shit happens. So here they don't even live on Fear Street. Yeah. yeah which I thought was a really refreshing. Yes. Change, even though maybe this is an earlier book, but it was cool to see two shady side characters be like, no, you never go there. Yeah. And also, it wasn't like a weird left turn, like the lifeguard, where they're like not even in Shady Side. Yeah, they're just like at a community pool. They're like, somewhere else, or um, dead lifeguard. Yeah, uh, where where the connection to Fear Street is that she lived there. Yeah, but then she goes but to a beach. That's not where they are. Uh, well, yeah, and so that's what made me think. I like I looked it up afterwards. It made me be like, is this a later one? But it's like number five. Yeah. So that's why I was like, this feels like a moment, like. Again, and like I just use the MCU as an example because it's that thing where it's like it was the whole point of like when like, you know, Captain America shows up and, you know, it's like one of those things where I was just like the whole the whole like turn of the story is like going one way and feels this thing. And then all of a sudden Fear Street enters and it kind of like changes the whole mood of the story. Yeah. So it It doesn't happen every time. Not like this. And I thought it was cool how it happened. Yeah, I I liked it. Yeah, Yeah, I liked it, too. Um, I have a question for you guys. Mm-hmm. Do we think that the detail that the masked guy's breath smelled like garlic was supposed to point oh us? Oh my god, the Italian restaurant! To the fact oh. that he worked at an Italian restaurant, maybe because I saw In that retrospect. detail and I was like, "What is this detail?" I like, totally forgot about that. Detail. So then I was like, "Are we going to no. see someone like chowing down on some garlic bread? Like what?" <laughs> We never do. So I, I was like, oh, it's just about the that. Allegra 3. Well, yeah, it's almost like you would imagine that they that they get taken into the room to meet the guy in the restaurant. And he's just like, I'm, I'm like, yeah, getting he's gross. Just... And it's like, and they notice the details of like all the garlic, you know. Yeah. Also, I, I like just thinking about that now. It's like those little prologue or those little what they did, like what, maybe like two or three chapters where it's from this like mysterious yeah. perspective. But it it didn't feel oh, like wait. it. It didn't, yeah. feel, it didn't feel like it lined up with the inner like madness of the bad guy though i totally no. forgot I thought about that, was that. Chuck, i thought but, that was know, chuck originally, yeah wait what so remember there's like little chap mini chapters where it's like i'll have to, i won't have to kill oh, again yeah blah, yeah blah, blah. but like that doesn't seem like mr farberson it definitely it sounds like a teenager yeah but well, you, like the actual words line up fine i think yeah i think like plot wise it yeah. lines up but like but that's the a voice but yeah because it's like Mr. Far- Far- Farberson. Farberson. Far- Farberson. Very Farberson. Italian name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Farberson. Because it's like, he, he seems like, you know, the way that they've lined out his, like, MO is that he, you know, he kills his wife because he's, like, not, you know, not making ends meet uh, and, like, the restaurant's failing and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's like, that kind of motivation really doesn't sync up with the type of like I will get my revenge. Like right. he's not a serial killer. He's a he, it's a crime of passion or like um yeah. Like yeah he's a sociopath, but he's not like a he doesn't seem like somebody who's like planning to murder people exactly. But that's also like like um acting like he's been thwarted so many yeah, times. Yeah, that's what I was curious in his about whole yeah. life. Like and that he had so many plans to kill again. Yeah, and, who's he killing? But I was like exactly, and it, like this seemed like. A greedy guy, like the Mr. Farberson. Yeah, yeah. Seems like a greedy guy that wants more money. He's a piece of shit. He um had an affair and then killed his wife because he wanted her money. Yeah. The chap the little like chapterlets of like the chapterlets. Yeah, of like Aww. the guy chaplets. Chaplets <laughs> of like the guy being Cheap. like <laughs> I'm like gonna like it just seemed very You're, like serial I'll, killer-ish. So I'll read the first one where I thought for sure this was a teenager, but it was because I was thinking about other books. It just sounded childish. But when I look at it, it does line up fine. It says, uh, scheming. It was the thing he'd been best at in his life. 
seeing something he wanted and figuring out how to go after it step by step. Not sure. the restaurant, though. He met, yeah. yeah, the restaurant sucked. He's great at he's great at killing. He's not good at uh, restaurant eating. Sure, he messed up a lot. He'd had some bad luck. Sometimes people got in his way, ruined his perfect plans. That wouldn't happen this time. This plan was his best. No way it could fail. No way he'd let anyone mess, mess up this one. As he sat in the dark, rolling it over and over in his mind, a sneer formed on his face. It was too bad what he had to do. He didn't really want to hurt anyone. It just sort of goes on like that. So are we thinking then that his plan was to just like Kill finagle his, his wife to get like for her to give him money? I think. It, no, I think he planned on killing her. So he always planned. on. So from the beginning, he was like, I'm going to kill this woman for her money. Yeah, I think so. I think, yeah, once he got the letter of her that she was going to leave because, yeah, we just did a on MFM. We just did a story recently where a guy was basically like a secret life thing where he was like living the high life and like off his wife's like Hallmark money. <laughs> like oh she God. ran a Hallmark business in Silmar. Um, <gasps> oh, no. sorry, I can't remember we her name. Right. Secret life in Silmar. Secret life. Uh, oh, fuck. But, and then it turned out that like he was paying for women on the side and all this stuff. And it was like, she was threatening to basically take away his fun secret money. And then <laughs> that's when, fun secret money. And then he basically got one of the people he was seeing to, like both of them basically like killed his wife. And again, mm. it's that thing of like, that's when the desperation of like, Oh no, I'm going to be found out that I'm a fraud, that I don't have any money that I can't support. Like these women that I'm seeing on the side where he's like pretending to be like Mac daddy when he's actually using his wife's like inheritance, yeah. money, Hallmark mm. business money and stuff. <laughs> sweet, sweet Hallmark money. Yeah. yeah. Those beating babies. So, oh, true. Um, but yeah, so that's why to me, it's like reading some of that stuff. It's like, that's more of um more of like to me it's more of like a serial killer who's like feels like they've been wronged by the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but so for I this so I for this we be... think then so do we think that he either A was like I'm always going to kill this woman, like I'm going to marry this woman and kill her and take her money? I don't think he thought that. I we think that he instead was like oh, I'll just, you know, use her money cuz he was treating um the girlfriend yeah, uh, Linda Morrison to all this stuff. <laughs> How do you know that? <laughs> He's burying her dead cats for her. Yeah, <laughs> that's very sweet. Not even burying, throwing so in close. the garbage at the restaurant. Yeah, which, that was rough. Don't do that. So sad. That was really sad. Um, well, I guess for, it died for unrelated for reasons. Yeah, um, off page two. Thank goodness. Yeah. yeah, for once. For once. Um. Yeah. Here's my head cannon. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Your, uh, wrong My number head cannon. Head cannon. Uh, he married this woman. They had like a real relationship, but I believe that this man cannot feel real love. Yes. So they get yes. married. It's like a genuine marriage. Mm -hmm. He gets tired of it. He feels like he's destined for greater things. He's better than her. He wants Allegra four. Um. So <laughs> like, <laughs> we haven't even gotten to Allegra one, two, and three yet. What happened so, with those ones? So here's what happened. Okay. Um, he's already feeling a little dissatisfied sure. and he's like, you know what? I just need to be my own boss. I'm not happy at work. That's probably what it is. He talks, he's like, my wife has a ton of money. There's no reason she shouldn't support me in this. He starts Allegra one. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work out. No. And he's like, okay, but I had some bad luck. I had a shitty staff. You know, that host was like fucking me over because he had it in for me. Well, also, it was weird that he s named it Allegra One. Yeah. Because people were like, is there more? Yeah. Why? Well, he grew up wanting to be an astronaut. And right. he always thought oh. that his first mission, would, he in his mind, he yeah. was like, I'm going to fly on the Allegra One. Right. But then also it was so, and okay. So he named it after that. <laughs> so he did that, Allegra yeah. One. And, so, and here's the thing. On the menus, it said Allegra O-N-E. And then on the sign it had allegra i because he doesn't have he's not detail oriented he, of course he's not no yeah, he, otherwise he would have been better at killing his yeah, wife yeah, teenage girls fit found him out <laughs> yeah uh, so it doesn't work out <laughs> yeah she sets him up with allegra two right she sets him up with allegra three right he's getting really down in the mouth yeah he feels now that his failures he's blaming it on his wife he feels that she is emasculating him and he, he keeps starts getting sleeping with Lynn. Induced mono. He keeps he keeps getting stress induced <laughs> mono. Yeah. Um. But then all of oh, that yeah, Linda, yeah. changes when Linda Morrison sweeps him off his feet and like she makes him feel like a man again. She makes him feel young again because she herself is young. 
they start having an affair and he's like, great, I can keep this going. I'll use my dumb cow wife Mm -hmm. for her money and I'll be sleeping with young, beautiful Linda. He He was like, only sort of beautiful. She has like frizzy hair. She's more young than beautiful. She's more young than beautiful. Also, like he's fooling himself, right? Like he thinks that this is some magical new relationship, but it's just that it's new. It's a new relationship and she's young. You're going to get tired of her again. It's going to happen again. She's got like... She's got like Sigourney Weaver hair from Ghostbusters, but not Sigourney Weaver face. Yeah. She she like is just like very forgettable looking. Yeah. She's just like very like early, like start of the 90s, like bad clothes, long skirts with socks and shoes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm hoping that now that Farberson... Farberson? I can't. Farberson. I, I don't think there's I the think D it's in there. It's because it's Martinson and Far- yes, Farberson. Far- Farberson. Farberson. Oh, it's the Midwest. <laughs> but like, I'm hoping that after the situation, he gets caught, he goes to jail. Mm-hmm. She still takes the tickets to Argentina. Yeah, she and has goes. a fucking uh, uh, t- under the Tuscan sun. Yeah, eat pretty yeah, love. Under the Tuscan sun. Fuck yeah. Grease her cat, like really yes. good yes. heels. Yes. Yeah, finds the right hair products for her. <laughs> yeah. Even though it it's hot there. It is um, hot there. She she dabbles a little bit with LA look. It doesn't it doesn't work. It doesn't look good. I mean, it's certainly an improvement. And then she has like what is cooler like fluffier curls. Like, well, she learns to stop curls. like brushing it so intensely. She does brush it too intensely. And she learns to stop spraying uh that sun spray in it that yeah. she oh. thinks makes her look blonder but, but it just actually like, makes just it brittle. like it makes it brittle <laughs> Very and like bad. dried out yeah and also like she also learns like just like if you want to brush your hair do it in the shower and then like let it do its thing because mm-hmm. you have natural curls girl yeah but you she have to treat them like, differently like trying she doesn't know what to do she doesn't know what to so, do but she's young she is young. she's 25 she's 25 um she spends two years in argentina Hell yeah. Oh, Argentina. Yeah. She goes okay. down there. She takes the tickets That's anyway. Nice. Yeah. She meets a Nazi. Oh, she meets no. she doesn't she, know though at first. She meets she, oh, I'm sorry. She meets a Nazi's son. son. Uh, uh they really hit it off. It turns into a different movie. <laughs> it's like really Altogether. sad. It's and, like and then really kinda, sad. Well, it goes from like right, it was horror, then it was like um, that it was uh like uh like rom com. Linda f- gets her groove back. Yeah. Yeah. And now it is like serious drama and then it turns into Indie a horror drama. movie again it turns into a revenge oh. drama oh, oh. Sorry, sorry, revenge two. horror that's like wrong number two right yeah that's what that end was about <laughs> yeah that's about <laughs> that's what that book is about yeah. so at this point novel. she's now yeah, yeah, novel. novel novel at in in wrong number two she's 27 because she spent two years right down there um she's like learned about coconut oils yeah, oh, she's tan that's as really well. she, oh, she's so tan. She looks amazing. She looks really good. She looks now. really good. She's because of love flame. makes you blossom. Right. She has a pregnant glow, but she's not pregnant. Yeah. Um, she she's a love glow. diaphragm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this is, yeah, this is 1990. This is 1990. The the Nazi's son's name is Rolf. Stuff? Oh, what's well, it's Rolf like Gustav? Rolf. Oh, okay. Um. <laughs> But he goes by RG. Yeah. <laughs> because if anyone knew his name, they would They'd know be like, oh, his yeah, father you're a, a fucking Nazi, Nazi war criminal. <laughs> yeah. um, so he, and he's. He's they, telling people his name is Raul. Yeah. He keeps saying Ra- his, his name is Raul. No one really believes it. Yeah. Because he looks like a Nazi youth. Yeah. He has yeah. blue eyes in <laughs> Argentina. Blue definitely eyes, Aryan. blonde hair. Yeah. Um, definitely super uh, born of a Nazi. Definitely the master race. <laughs> and he, he's like doing his own thing. Like he, He's trying to escape the past of his parents oh, being you, Nazis. Do you think he's a fisherman? Oh my god! Like he yeah, wants to make himself fisherman. humble, so he's like out yeah. there with like a net and stuff, and that's when he sees her on the beach. But yes. like he he wakes up in a cold sweat every night because he's convinced that evil is in his genes, <laughs> and it is, and it it's is true. That's the problem. Yeah, that's the problem. It is because, but yeah, she so meets she him, he takes it's to as like side money. He takes people out on on his boat as like a touristy thing. Yeah. That's where but they then, meet. like, so she finds out that he's a Nazi because uh-huh. he, um, so he like lives in a hut because he's trying to be humble. Yep. And he has like a file cabinet in there, and um, uh-huh. it has his birth certificate. <laughs> she's snooping <laughs> around. So she's like, uh, he, so he, he has a two room hut. So he's like okay. in the other room of the, the office. <laughs> he's in the office of the hut. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he's like. He's like getting ready. Yeah. Um, and she's like, oh, should I fix this something to drink? And he's like, oh, sure. It's in the cabinet. But he but 
Wait, there's she, two cabinets. And Linda's kind of dumb. She's <laughs> kind she of She takes dumb. file cabinets. So she <laughs> opens the file cabinet and just like laying on the top of all the files is his birth certificate. Uh-huh. And unfortunately, Gustav. like Linda's Rolf dumb. Gustav. But she did go to college with a degree in history. And unfortunately, like she, she studied World she's War like, II I know this history. Name. And she was like, I know for a fact that is a Nazi war criminal. Yeah. So then she's like, can you explain this? You lied to me. And he's like, no, no. He's like, no, I was only. <laughs> and his accent suddenly comes yeah, out. And he's like, oh, no, it's, oh, it's not so funny. My accent is back. <laughs> and she's like, how could you do this to me? I I thought that you loved me. And he's like, I do. I do love you. But I'm also a son of a Nazi. And then um, so then he like has to go outside and be in the rain. Mm-hmm. And like think about things. Yeah, it's when we pull or, out and we're yeah. like having like um, Gal Garcia but all like clapping, and it's like the Academy Awards, <laughs> and it's just like. <laughs> Gal Garcia Bernal is, plays uh, <laughs> it's a really incredible role in wrong number two <laughs> and the winner is the winner for best adapted screenplay is <laughs> and then you two go on stage oh, accepting the, the award <laughs> and we're like thank you and then we both get like a uh, shot with arrows and they're like um a- attached to the arrows is like a, a note from R.L. Stein and he's like how dare you do this to my book <laughs> He's like Batman, like waiting in the wings. <laughs> and we're like, don't you mean novel? <laughs> and then we die. And then pan out. Best Girl, actress. Garcia Bernal. <laughs> oh, no, I was going to be in. like, Dina, wake up. And just, <laughs> and we've just been in the mind of Dina this whole time. This whole time. She has such. A, and <laughs> Jade is like, hey, Dina, we're in garbage. Wake up. <laughs> And she's like, why are we here? What? In the craziest dream. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that pretty much sums up both wrong number and wrong number two. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. I I did like this book. I did too. I I, I think definitely one of the stronger mm-hmm. steins. I would say this one, uh Cheerleaders Two, right? That's is that the one where two or, or one? I one is the one where Bobby dies, right? Yeah. Bob, okay. One is the one where Bobby dies. One is dies. the one where Bobby dies. All three were pretty good. Mm-hmm. I think one and two were better than three. Oh, that's right. We didn't like three as much. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because one and two seemed to be written by a different person Uh-oh. than three. Just because it like seemed like the characters didn't care about the same things as much mm. in three. In one and two, they were like, we're cheerleaders, and that's oh, cool. Oh, yeah. And three, All they were kind of like, like a romantic. boys, which I was like, I don't need that. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> But this one was really good. I really liked this one. Yeah. Um, and really good cover. It was tightly plotted. Shit actually took place. Um, the only... Like, people were telling the characters that, like, they were imagining things. But it was the police as part of a larger plot as opposed to, like, one girl and, like, all of her friends and family. Yeah. And it um, made sense that like, they would be gaslighting yeah. her. Yeah. Yeah. They're gaslighting her for justice, not just to be mean. <laughs> We are gaslighters for justice. <laughs> for justice. Well, gaslighters like, unite. We swore an oath. <laughs> well, it's like, yeah, once kind of Chuck's out of the picture, I feel like the story actually kind of figures out what it's trying to do. Like, it's pretty yeah. like, it's like a nice little Scooby-Doo mm-hmm. kind of adventure. And I was pleasantly surprised that Chuck gets sidelined. Yeah, I was almost. I liked And that. it's just the two of them. Well, did you think there was one of those chaplets? <laughs> <laughs> Such a cute name for them. Uh, that I thought at first second that the whoever the masked person in the killer was like somebody from Chuck's past who was like following him oh. to town or something. Which doesn't really align that. with Fear Street, but like... I thought it was going to end up being somebody um, they prank called. Mm. Well, like, but then like very quickly they stopped prank calling anyone. And yeah. I was like, well, that discounts that. Well, also, pennies like, from heaven. That's yeah. what they were. <laughs> also, Chuck, Chuck, you're misunderstood. Mm-hmm. But like... Don't call in a fake bomb threat. <laughs> that was extreme. he went from zero was, to was, yeah, It was that yeah, was his first that's call. True. That's true. That was in, like he's young and he's troubled. He's very troubled. His dad, I know, sucks. Yeah, We've established true. this. Everyone's still reeling from that yeah, trauma, of finding out that family secret. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Um, Both families. I was just gonna read a couple other things I highlighted. They don't really have a, a place in it. Anything no, we talked about, but. Um, we have another instance of, uh, main character girl cooking for people. Aside from Um, the cereal? Aside from the cereal. (laughs) 
It was a perfect night for a cookout. Oh, she yeah. made hamburger patties with pieces of cheese inside. And her favorite... <laughs> That's not pretty and, good. Yeah. And her I'm special to potato salad with onion, tomatoes, and sliced black olives. Uh, hold on. Tomatoes mm. and a potato salad. I have questions about that. Mm. I have questions about that. It's very I, wet potato what, salad. It's so yeah. wet. And so wet. I, I have think it's never like cherry tomatoes. seen tomatoes in a potato salad. Not no, even, I don't think no it doesn't tomatoes? fit. It doesn't fit. No, no, you don't do it. Oh, no, that's a pasta salad. Pasta, yeah, pasta, pasta salad. salad. A Definitely plus, a plus, tomatoes. you do a tomato. Are you crazy right now? <laughs> forgive me, forgive me. So I have one more highlighted passage to leave us on. Sock it to us. <laughs> yes. It is when they have just heard the intense call uh-huh. of Mr. Mrs. Farberson. 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 Ferguson. Ferguson. And they're like, oh, my God, what are we going to do? And it says, Chuck snatched the phone off the table. Will you cool it? He said. He reached for the phone book. The police emergency number is 911, Dina told him. The police what emergency number is, is 911. First of all. <laughs> Thank you, Dina. That's ever so helpful. Dina yeah. has been waiting for this moment for so She's like, I only know one fact. And it's that if you want to call the police emergency number, you have to dial 911. I memorized one number my mom and dad made me. It's the only number not on my speed dial. Yeah. She put <laughs> she puts 911 on her speed dial. Because like two more numbers is too much work. <laughs> like, I'm afraid I'll forget. Oh God. Dina. Dina. What do you what would you say to somebody? Like, let's say we just found a body. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. I've been waiting oh, my entire life I'm for this moment. No. <laughs> and then, and then, let's put it on Stephen. So you're mm-hmm. like, you're like, guys, calm down. And Stephen's like, the police emergency number is nine one one. And I'm like, just like so proud of myself because I'm like, I knew, like, I could help in this situation. I finally have something to contribute. <laughs> what do you guys think? Great. Okay. <laughs> do you, okay. I guess I'll call it then. So I'm, I'll, Lindsay, call it. Call. I'll call. Great. I'll call. Great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh my great. god! Great, great, great. And Thank I you. helped <laughs> <laughs> with an assist for me, Dina. <laughs> well, that's what I think. That's why the ending of this book is so crushing because they're like, not only did all of us know what was going on and had it figured out, but you guys like. I mean, and they didn't, the police weren't even going as far to say as like, you could have screwed this all up for us. Like we were so close to getting him and you bungled it, but you Mm -hmm. know, but somehow you guys helped. They were like, you guys having fun. Thank God we got here in time. Like they didn't even give him the dignity (laughs) of like worried or mad. Yeah. Like like they literally like didn't affect their thing at all. Yeah. Almost like that's the indignity of it almost for them. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Nope. It did not affect their investigation at all they're like we would have caught him you know sooner yep. or later i mean i think they even say that like yeah. we would have yeah. got him sooner or later yeah yeah they're like we were always thinking of him uh, which thanks is, for this note though yeah and also like which is why we never told you guys to like stay the fuck away like yeah. we never you're right they like, didn't even be like look this is an open investigation we're looking into a lot of people that's it done that's it ding but stay they needed home. him to think they needed mr algebra three Mm-hmm. to think oh they got chuck for it yep so that's wrong number one so that's wrong number one um check out wrong number two the movie uh <laughs> coming into theaters christmas of next year <laughs> it's gonna be because you know movie. we're trying to hit those awards it's, yeah. season. it's gonna be a netflix christmas movie yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be called the christmas wrong number two <laughs> the wrong christmas number. santa <laughs> <laughs> santa's home wait <laughs> As a growing up, did you guys like talking on the phone a lot? I feel like I love talking. On the I phone loved as a kid, talking, but on the I was phone. too afraid to do like prank phone calls and stuff. Oh, I was terrified. I loved talking on the phone up until junior high and high school, and then I just felt super awkward. Yeah, I think it was like once you could text people, you're like, oh, thank God. Yeah. Well, I wasn't texting until like 2005. I, I oh, and I was um 24. I was texting for sure, but I remember still like I liked talking on the phone to my best friend. Like, we would talk just for hours about nothing. Yeah. Or anything. Boys, clothes, mm-hmm. movies, anything. TV. 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 Books. Books. Novels. Novels. <laughs> Skin. Chaplets. Tomatoes. Chaplets. Chaplets. Potato salad. <laughs> our, our special recipe. <laughs> our, our special family recipe. Mm-hmm. Potato, Potato salad with tomatoes. Salad. Oh, wait. No. Cereal with blueberries on top. 
that your yeah. that your um, half brother throws in the sink. Here's a fun recipe I got from HelloFresh: <laughs> <laughs> cereal with blueberries on top. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Um, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on and doing this show, Stephen. Yeah, um, thank you, Stephen. Thank you you so are much. a lovely delight. I'm glad I got to come back and read a real novel as opposed yes. to Goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> which like still breaks Novelette. my heart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Novelette. Novelette. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything you would like to plug? Uh, I mean, other than just checking out See Jurassic Right, uh, the Jurassic Park podcast I do and the Percast, um, which Kelly has been on. Yay. Meow, meow. Um, and yeah, it's pretty much it. Woo. You know, it's going to be the holiday soon. I feel like a, a, like... It was like doing holiday episodes for, or doing Halloween episodes, because you were on a Halloween episode, or like around Halloween mm-hmm. last year, and we did a fun Halloween episode this year about like mythical cats, which is really cool. cool. So if you're still in the Halloween spirit, you can go listen to that. Or I watched a really bad, uh, on the Sea Jurassic Right, we watched Carnosaur, which was a movie that was made to try and beat Jurassic Park to theaters, <laughs> but, they only, but they spent less than a million dollars, so it was like hand puppets like next to the camera, like eating people, Whoa. and it starred... Um, it starred Laura Dern's mom, Diane Ladd. So it's like Whoa. around the dinner table. It's like, you're both working on dinosaur movies. What's yours like? And it's like, oh, mine's going to like revolutionize cinema and blockbuster <laughs> filmmaking. She's like, yeah, like we like had like cool, like fake blood and like hand puppets. That's crazy. It's like Roger Corman kind of um, thing. Wow. Have you seen, we've talked about this movie on the show. Mm-hmm. Dino King. Have you seen Dino no. King? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about Dino King. It is a Korean no, movie. No, no, no. We have on the episode with Steven. Didn't we? we? Oh, I told oh, on the you Patreon the whole, episode? Yeah, on the Jurassic Park I told Park you the whole Patreon plot of Dino episode. King. You need to see it. Oh, my gosh. Because like, Blue Eyes. Yes. There's yeah. Blue yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, like, Scrappy or something. Like they, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, like, they, like, there's so much death. And, like, yeah. Oh I think gosh. it's, is it Hamlet? <laughs> I think it might be Hamlet, but dinosaurs. <laughs> oh, well, that's the Lion King, Dino yeah. King. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah. yes. It's, okay, it's, that... it's, it's a super rip. I need on, to do my homework yeah. on Lion King and watch this. Like, yeah, I know we. Yeah, you we we have talked about this extensively with yeah, Stephen. On, <laughs> yeah, you do need to watch his, it. Uh, Jurassic Park um, Patreon episode when we read Jurassic Park. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I'll have to watch Dino King, maybe make an episode out of it and have you two come and be on it. Oh my God. Yeah. I would be honored. I would be honored. Uh, I think it's on Netflix it. or probably on YouTube for free. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Good old, but it's like on YouTube where it's like flipped or something. Yeah. Or it's like mm-hmm. in a corner with like the like shit happening, like all the Goosebumps episodes on oh, YouTube. Oh God, I hate that. It's so tacky. So much. I really wish we could just go buy Netflix, but we don't want to. Make people make people have to pay for Netflix if That's you don't fair. have it, especially internationally. That's the issue. Yeah, because yeah. I was like in the U.S., I was like, ask someone for a password. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but yeah, and then you can also just find me at Stephen Ray Morris on Twitter and Instagram. So yay. check it out there. Which but yeah, is always delightful. Yeah, little dose of Stephen. A on wonderful the daily basis. Instagram. A wonderful chaplet Twitter. of Stephen. <laughs> chaplets like, of little, Stephen. Chaplets of Stephen all day. Oh my, oh gosh. my god, that sounds like a, an anime, <laughs> and then like. The background of it is like leaves falling in in the fall. And it's like chocolates <laughs> of Steven. <laughs> Welcome. Yes, that sounds amazing. Well, yeah, um, thank you. That um, actually uh, reminds me um, that in talking about uh, your episode you did with Jurassic Park, um, that we will be adding something to our $8 tier for Patreon just to like give a little extra added value to our subscribers. Um We'll be having uh, plot write-ups Yay. of the books we do. We will put those up the day before our episodes release. So just all of our outside episodes and outside genre episodes. Um, we will have a quick rundown of the plot um, just available on our Patreon site um, that you can peruse the day before. Also, I'm going to say this. If you're an $8 patron, I just sent Lindsay the pictures that my mother sent me of oh, me yeah. with the white girl cornrows <laughs> and me with the pom pom wig. I will print those out at CVS and I will. Yeah, we promised we'd do that. Yeah, I'll, 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 if you're an $8 patron, I'll add that in with your stickers. You'll yeah. get that. You'll, you'll get some beautiful printouts. Yeah. CVS photo paper. Yeah. Of, of, uh, of little cornrow Kelly. God, and I don't, I ever have call to. Me <laughs> <laughs> little cornrow Kelly. <laughs> Little baby cornrow Kelly. Oh, God. Little baby cornrows. 
Oh, God. Um, They're worth it, you guys. Yeah. So that will start with next week's episode to segue into we'll be reading Last Vampire 5 by Woo! Christopher Pike. Finally getting back to that series. Very excited. Um, which is the perfect one to uh, begin this like um, plot summary feature for our eight dollar patrons because i will also give a brief reminder of what the other four books are about yes yes and you will need that because mm -hmm. a lot happened in those books yep um thank you guys so much uh for listening um and you've heard us talk a lot about our patreon if you want to get on board with that uh that is patreon.com slash teen creeps and thank you so much to those of you who already give uh we really appreciate it you are basically producers of our show oh um, and thank you so much to all the to the people who tweeted at Patreon to yes! make our page not um, adult content content blocked, um, it worked. They did. They did unblock it. Yeah, finally, finally. I, I mean, it was like a week or more. It was they like were not getting weeks. even getting back to us. Not a response. At and all. then a few people tweeted at them, and, and then that, the next day they unblocked it. Yep. So thank you guys so, so much. How are the people? Just literally Get just to gonna the polls. say that. I was literally just going to say part of it. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for listening. Like Lindsay said, next week we're reading Last Vampire 5, Evil Thirst. Uh, thank you so much again to Stephen Ray Morris for being a stellar guest. We will chat with you guys next week. Thanks so much. Keep it creepy. Forever <laughs> Dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by Dog. Kelly Nugent, Lindsay Katai, Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Keep up with the latest Forever Dog news by following us on Twitter and Instagram.